The British historian Alan John Percival Taylor wrote that war has always been the mother of invention. Sorry Alan, that may not be entirely true. Hi last watchers, Happy New Year and welcome to my first review of 2022. Before I get started, I just wanted to thank you all for supporting the channel. I clocked up 15,000 subscribers just before Christmas. My dream would be to double that over the next year. As I said, it's a dream. So a big shout out to everyone for watching, especially if you subscribed. Thanks also to the many brands that provided me with watches and accessories to look at during 2021. I already have some big name brands set up for 2022, with a Swiss chronograph lined up for later this month. Today's watch comes from Singapore based Vario, who are better known for their straps and cases than they are for their timepieces. This is their 1918 Trench, a very modern watch, heavily influenced by what is now an antique design. The 1918 has been supplied, somewhat confusingly, on a mahogany brown leather bun strap. I have to be honest, I'm not a fan, and I'll talk to you more about that later. For practicality's sake, I'll remove the strap for the first portion of this review, as it's the only way I can get a good look at the watch and measure its dimensions. The case diameter is exactly 37mm, with a lug to lug of 44.5mm. The lug width is 18mm, the case thickness, courtesy of its domed crystal, measures in at 11.8mm. The case weight is 496 grams. the bun strap adds a further 20 grams, bringing the total weight to just under 70 grams. overall a relatively small and lightweight affair. A quick disclaimer. The 1918 is a review piece which has been through the hands of several reviewers and may show some signs of wear. You could say it's been through the trenches. Sorry. In any case, I only have this watch for review purposes before I send it back off on its travels. Vario aren't paying me for this review. The almost perfectly round truckle shaped 316L stainless steel case has a soft horizontal brushed finish. The only exceptions to its clean shape are the addition of some polished turned down wire style lugs that enter the case through some uniform drilled holes. Yes, I said holes, there are no rough welds here. There's also a slightly squashed onion styled polished screw down crown at the quarter past four position which Vario have signed with their V logo. There's a flush fitting fixed polished bezel that encases a 2mm double dome sapphire crystal which I am told has an inner anti-reflective coating. Beneath this scratch resistant crystal we have an impeccably white enamel dial with a black train track chapter ring with 5 defined minute intervals. Within this track there are bold art deco arabics, skeleton numbers with a heavy black drop shadow outline painted with orange tinted C3 loom that seems to jump from the dial. This is where the fun starts and my history lesson begins. I tried to source the font used for the arabics. I could have just asked Vario but where's the fun in that? My search took me down a bit of a rabbit hole as initially I thought the art deco style would have been too early for a watch from the first world war. In any case I was mistaken as it turns out that art deco had its roots in the 19 teens and these arabics were still very popular a generation or so later on many watches during the second world war. No doubt helped by their strong legibility. Now I need to make a confession here. I had it in my head that wristwatches were invented during the great war by Cartier. <coughs> Wrong again. It's funny how the mist of time has fogged the history of our precious timepieces. I will do my best to summarise with a brief explanation and bring some clarity. In 1904 Brazilian aviator Alberto Santos Dumont mentioned to his pal Louis Cartier that using a pocket watch whilst flying his plane was somewhat awkward. Cartier was spurned on to invent a square bezel pilot's watch which we now know as the Santos. Omega, IWC and Longines soon followed with their own designs. However, there is a suggestion that the Dimier brothers superseded Cartier by inventing the first wristwatch in 1903. I won't even mention the Gerard Perigord naval watches from 1879. 
Regardless, wristwatches weren't popular, or more to the point, they weren't popular with men. They were worn by ladies, and they were called wristlets. A proper gentleman carried a pocket watch. There were, however, a grand number of adventurers, horse riders, aviators, automobilists, yes, the car was in its infancy, and of course, military officers that required something more practical. Now imagine it's 1914, you've barely left school, or possibly a young chap that's looking to make a mark on the world. You don't want to work the land, go down the coal mine, spend your time in the mill, or sit in an office like your dad and his granddad before him. You head off with your pals to serve king and country, be a hero and fight in the Great War. You end up in the trenches with your brothers in arms. Only a handful of you have a pocket watch, and you dare not strike a match to tell the time, as it will give away your position in the darkness. Your commanding officer takes a quick glance at his wrist. His face is bathed in a radium glow, and he tells you precisely when the big guns will signal the next attack. The officer's watch, or trench watch, was born. It was about to become the most wanted gadget of the early 20th century. The wristwatch wasn't an invention of the First World War, but it quickly became a necessity. The early manufacturers couldn't keep up with its rising popularity. Demand from soldiers outstripped supply, which is why many pocket watches were adapted in the trenches, welded with wire lugs, and fitted with crudely made leather straps. The lucky troops that got home wanted an officer's watch. In turn, so did their pals. Soldiers were the influencers of their day. That sparked a new trend for what we now call wristwatches. If you'd like to know more about the history of the wristwatch, then I suggest you read the First Men's Wristwatches by David Boucher. I'll leave a link in the video description below. And after that educational diversion, I still don't know the name of this Arabic font. Back to the dial. We have the Vario Signature brand name just below the 12 o'clock position, and a sunken subdial with small seconds cutting into the top of the 6. A miniature seconds train track with 10 second Arabics and a seconds hand fitted with a counterbalance lollipop, all printed with a deep glossy black paint. At the heart of the dial, you will find sumptuous black paint of cathedral hour and minute hands, maybe a little too rich compared to the black of the hour markers. Both hands sport needle tips, the minute hand looking dangerously like a wasp's tail and stinger. As like the hour Arabics, both hands are filled with thick orange C3 loom. It would appear that trench watches were using loom some four decades before the infamous dive watches of the 1950s, and sadly for the women that painted those dials, it was radioactive radium. Luckily, the C3 loom here is entirely safe, but Vario acknowledge that the overly orange loom they have used is somewhat weaker than its whiter alternative, taking longer to charge and quicker to fade. Before I leave the dial, I did notice that the central pinion has been capped, a sweet touch, though it does show some signs of smudging. I don't know if this is down to quality control or my loaner being a prototype. The rear of the watch has a diver style screw down case back. The addition of the screw down crown mentioned earlier give the 1918 100 meters of water resistance, which is not to be sniffed at. You can see that the case back has been engraved with Ivan, the owner of Vario's name, and I guess his date of birth. Credit card details would be a bonus. An engraved case back rather than a sterile plate is a purchase option when you buy the trench watch. If you're a fan of movements, they also offer a sapphire crystal display case back. The case back perimeter outlines the watch specifications, its automatic movement, sapphire crystal, Singapore origin, 100 meters of water resistance, and stainless steel case. There's no mention of its ceramic dial, but a date that no one should forget, 11-11-1918, the end of the First World War, Armistice Day. The caliber power in the 1918 trench watch is the dependable Miyota 82 S5. If you opt for the sapphire case back, it will benefit from a gilt finish and Cote de Genève stripes. The 82 S5 hacks and hand winds, has 21 joules, beats at 21,600 ticks an hour or 6 ticks a second, and has a power reserve of 40 hours. It has an accuracy rate in between minus 20 and plus 40 seconds per day. This particular movement is running at a fairly standard 
plus 13 seconds a day. The bun strap that the 1918 came on is a little out of place for a trench watch. Although leather cuffs were being used as early as the 1920s, it was only their development for German Air Force pilots during the Second World War that saw them rise to popularity. The strap took its name from the pilots of the Federal Republic of Germany, or Bundesrepublik Deutschland as it was then known. My disliking of the bun strap is purely personal. I don't like the way it adds both height and girth to a relatively small watch. It also gets in the way of you winding and setting your watch. You have to place a finger behind the case to create space to do so. It also reminds me of leather martingales adorned with horse brasses that I saw as a child hung on the walls of many a miner's cottage of which I was never a fan. The irony is that buns are bloody comfortable. Possibly the most comfortable strap you will ever wear and its build much like a modern day NATO, means you will be hard pressed to ever lose your watch. The bun strap is a clever piece of design. Not only does it protect the watch, but it also protects the wearer from the watch. Some inferior early watches were made from brass that over time would stain the wearer's skin, but that was nothing compared to what extreme temperatures could do in the cockpit of a plane. Sub-zero cold or burning hot metal on the wrist of a pilot could be extremely painful and potentially catastrophic. The mahogany bund has that vintage feel and secures the wire lugs via some flat studded screws. Its tail is a little short, bigger wrists might struggle with the fit. Luckily Vario also sent me a more modern equivalent, a coal black bund with a single pass leather strap. Another benefit of the bund is that you have two straps in one. Removing the bund overlay gives the 1918 a more streamlined profile and a look more fitting of the original trench watches with their ad hoc leather straps. This one is also longer. I think anyone picking up one of these modern day trench watches will have fun trying it with various NATOs and Zulus, all of which you can pick up from Vario when you buy the watch. The 37mm 1918 trench watch costs £272, $368 or €324 Euros, and comes with a one year international warranty. For those of you with a larger wrist or just prefer a larger size then the good news is Vario have just announced a new 40mm version. Getting hands on with the Vario 1918 trench has been a bit of an education. I've learned so much about the early days of watches and blown a few misconceptions well and truly out of the water. Vario did a pretty decent job nailing the design of the 1918. The inclusion of the ceramic dial with small subseconds was an expense they could so easily have cut. They may have saved some cash on the movement but the sapphire crystal, screw down crown and case back and automatic hacking movement have brought this antique design well and truly up to date. Although it may be aesthetically correct for a period piece, I find the overly bright orange painted loom too jarring and a little too clinical. Don't hate me, I'm usually a big fan of Fatina, but this loom looks too fresh. Some aging or lost paint flecks would have added to rather than detracted from its looks. However, the 1918 comes in a choice of dial and case options. In amongst them, I found some white loomed variants with black and grey ceramic dials. The grey would be my pick of the bunch. It's gorgeous and a thoroughly modern take on a classic historical timepiece. If I was in the market for a 21st century trench watch, I'd give the 1918 some serious consideration. Many thanks to Ivan at Vario for supporting the channel and loaning me the 1918. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks to all of you for watching and be sure to let me know what you think of the trench watch in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in my next video.